Hey, what's up guys? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today, gonna discuss the what's next on Jose Cepeda, the former two division world title challenger who uh, just returned to action last weekend on the 22nd on the ESPN undercard, the Taylor Ramirez uh, undisputed title fight. He was the co-feature. He took on Hammer and Hank Lundy, former world title challenger, and outboxed them, outworked them over 10 rounds, got a clean 10 round decision. It wasn't his best performance, especially coming off the fight of the year against Yvonne Berry and Chick last year, where there, there was eight knockdowns in that fight. I think a lot of people were expecting a uh, blowout or him to go at it, you know, and the thing is, is Zapeta, I've, I've been saying it, you know, since the fight with Varian Chick, Zapeta's always had a good amount of power, but a lot of that was at lightweight. He was a, he was a good power puncher at lightweight against lower level opposition. Um, since he stepped up the competition, but especially since he stepped up to 140, he hasn't had that blitzing power, but he still shows it at times, like against, um, like against what's his name, um, Varian Chick knocking him out last year. I think he kind of got more forced into that kind of fight, though. And then he, you know, obliged, and he was, you know, I don't want to say lucky enough, but he was fortunate enough to land the better uh, knockout punch and lay out Varian Chick to, to win that fight. But, you know, heading into this one with Lundy, it was just like, you know, um, I'm not surprised it went 10 rounds. I'm not surprised Lundy had a little success. Lundy's always been a decent fighter, you know? I mean, he had some success against Terrence Crawford when they fought back in 2016. I know he, they said coming into that fight, he was like nine and seven in his last 16 fights. So I know he's passed it and maybe Zapata should have dominated him. But you know, hey, when you're coming off of a, an absolute war like that, you know, it's sometimes you don't get the best performance in your next fight. So, um, especially when you come off of that and you're, you're riding so high and you can't get the fight that you want. So you end up taking on a faded former world title challenger like Lundy, you know, it, it's not enough. I'm not making excuses. I think every guy should get up for every fight, but I've seen this happen a million times before where you don't, you get in there, you kind of do a workman's like decision. And that's what it was. It was a workman's like decision. You got the win and you know, he's moving forward. So now the big question for Zapata is what's next? Well, he's the number one contender in the WBC. Josh Taylor beat Jose Ramirez is now the undisputed champion. I don't believe the WBC is going to mandate him to fight Taylor next. I just don't see it. The WBC has been the most corrupt governing body the last few years. And, um, when there's an undisputed champ like this or a situation with a big name, they're not the first ones to run to the table and force a fight to happen. I think they're going to allow Taylor to make his WBO mandatory and Jack Catterell and then see what he wants to do after that. So we'll see though. Let's run through the top 10 for Cepeda and see what's possible. Number one is the newly crowned undisputed champion, Josh Taylor. I don't see this fight happening next. I think, um, Taylor wants to explore other options with bigger names um, and possibly go after those guys. You know, it's funny though, is this is the only guy in the top five that Taylor has not beaten. He's beaten Pro Gray, he's beaten Ramirez, and he beat Victor Postol. So, um, you know, I would love to see him do it, but I really believe it's going to be the Jack Catterell fight for Taylor because he's, you know, he was asked to step aside a couple times now and he's done that. And now, he's next is what it looks like. So I don't think the WBC is going to mandate the fight. Number two is Jose Ramirez, a rematch with Jose Ramirez. I'm not sure Ramirez wants to go straight back in after losing to Taylor. I'm not sure he's going to want to go straight back in and go into a fight like this, a fight that he almost lost against Zapata. Um, not completely ruling it out because it's an easier fight to make, but I think that, um, I think Zapata would love the fight. It would, it would guarantee, if he could beat Ramirez, it would guarantee him a shot with Taylor. But I just don't think Ramirez would want that. So I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna say no to this one. Number three is Regis Progray. Now this is the fight that I think makes most sense for both guys. Um, because Progray's number two in the WBC and wants a fight with Taylor. But unless Taylor desires that rematch, he's not gonna do it unless he has to. And you know, I think 
Pro Gray and Cepeda fighting each other to become the, the absolute mandatory WBC number one contender would guarantee the fight next after Taylor's done with Jack Catterell. So I think this fight definitely has some legs and definitely could happen because it makes sense for both of these fighters to, to have this fight. But we'll see. Again, number four was uh, was uh, is Cepeda. Number five is Victor Postel. You know, the former champ. I think this fight makes a lot of sense too for Cepeda. If, you know, Postel just fought, was the WBC mandatory. Um, you know, he fought to become the WBC mandatory. Uh, actually, no, he was the mandatory and he fought Ramirez and came up just short as Zapata did. So, if all else fails, why not Zapata and Postal? The winner would become a mandatory, you know, at the title and it would make sense. If Progray doesn't want to fight Zapata, why not Victor Postal, the former champ, get in the ring with him and a win there would lock up a number one spot, a shot and a title shot against Taylor or whoever the champion is, or he would just fight for, fight for the vacant title. But I think this fight makes a lot of sense for Cepeda, and he should look at it if he can't get the pro-gray fight. Now, number six, I got Robert Easter Jr. I don't see it happening because I don't think... Uh, Zepeda's been working with top rank. Robert Easter fights for the PBC. I think they'd rather circle Robert Easter around PBC guys, even though there's not a lot to choose from. I think they would rather do that than sign on for a fight like this. Plus... You know, for Cepeda, it's like, hey, do I need this fight when I'm already the number one contender? I'm not sure. You know, to take that risk, crossover promotions, do all that junk, I'm not sure it makes sense for Cepeda. Number seven, I still got Pablo Cesar Cano. If th this fight was makeable, I think it's a good somewhat kind of stay busy because Cano was ranked pretty high by the WBC a couple years ago. You know, he knocked out Jorge Linares in one round in January of 2019. Hasn't really done much since, but... If DAZN and Golden Boy would get together with ESPN and top rank, I think this fight could be made, and I'd like to see it, but I'm not sure we're going to. So I'm going to lean towards a no on that one, but I do think there is an outside chance. Now, uh, number eight would be a rematch with Jose Pedraza, who he soundly outboxed and beat, um, did Zepeda, uh, in, in 2019. In September of 2019, these two guys fought. And a lot of people thought Pedraza was going to win. I personally picked Zepeda, and Zepeda cleanly outboxed him over 10 rounds. So P Pedraza's trying to get back in the mix, but for Zepeda, he doesn't need this fight. He dominated Pedraza. It wouldn't mean anything to him to, for a rematch, so I'm going to say no. Number nine would be a rematch with Ivan Baryanchik. Would love to see it. I don't think Baryanchik would want that right out, the, you know, right now, but maybe he would, but does P does Cepeda need it when he's a number one contender? Does he need to go to war and wear himself out again just to give the fans what they want? Because, hey, I'm not not—I'm a fan, and I would love to see those two guys rematch. But with Cepeda knocking on the door of a world title shot and a major one, does he need this fight? And I just don't think he does. So I'm going to say no to that one. And then finally, you know, I still have – you can argue it any way you want. I still have um, Adrian Granados rounding out the top ten. And he's been fighting more with the PBC, so I don't see it. But, you know, I wouldn't completely rule it out. So that's it. That's the what's next on Jose Zepeda. Again, for me, the fight that makes the most sense is Regis Progray. It's a big fight, and it would be to become mandatory number one contender. And it's a fight both guys need. That's the thing. Both guys need that fight um, to, to get Josh Taylor in the ring. Because I don't think Josh Taylor is going to want to fight either one of them. So... You know, I think they need that fight to mandate a fight with Taylor, and it makes sense for both of them. Victor Postal should be a very big option for Zepeda also to lock up that title shot. And then after that, you know, maybe Pablo Cesar Cano if we're looking at top 10. If not, I would hate to see him stay busy, but he might just have to before he gets a title shot. But I really hope the Pro Gray fight or Postal fight comes through for Zepeda because he needs it for his resume and to, and to mandate that title shot. So that's it. That's the what's next on Jose Zepeda, the former two-time world title challenger. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.